Chapter 4 Boxes, Boxes, and More Boxes Good morning, sweetheart. Your mom chirped when she had saw you exited your room. Morning, mama, you said. You weren't quite sure how you got into your room and into your pajamas, but you woke up inside your sleeping bag on top of your mattress. You did, however, remember falling asleep on Sally Face's shoulder. How could you forget? You dreamt about it all night long, and your cheeks were sore from smiling uncontrollably. How did I get home last night? You don't remember? Your mother queried. You shook your head no and sat down to start eating your breakfast. Lucky for you, I grabbed some Gatorade from the store yesterday. It's good for hangovers. Chug this water while you're at it. She motioned to the glass of water next to you. I'm not hungover, Mom. You answered as she raised her eyebrow. You reached for the glass of water. There's no way you wouldn't remember Sal carrying you back from Larry's and into your room if you weren't blackout drunk. You choked on your water. What? Embarrassed you're a lightweight? Your eyes widened as you processed what your mom just said. Sal carried me back? Yeah, and into your room. You were sound asleep. Don't worry though, I helped you put on those pajamas. Mom replied nonchalantly. He's a very sweet boy. You should date him. Mom! What? Just a suggestion. Your mom smirked. You sat there silently as you tried your hardest to remember what had happened last night, but you had zero recollection of Sally Face carrying you in his arms back up to the apartment. You wished you did, and tried your hardest to remember, but nothing. Sad you missed it? Your mom asked as she slid over a bottle of Gatorade. I don't need this, I wasn't drunk! There was zero alcohol consumption last night. Your mom gave you a disbelieving look. I swear, I was just really tired and fell asleep at Larry's. You blushed at the thought of Sal holding you in his arms. Your mom did that thing she always does when she thinks you're full of shit. Weight shifted to one leg, hands on her hips, and eyebrow raised. You know I don't care if you drink, just be careful, baby. She sat across from you and held your hands. You remembered how Sally Face had held your hands in the same manner. I just want you to be safe. When I was your- There was a loud knock at the door. Thank God, you thought. You didn't need another when I was your age lecture from your mom. You had already heard enough of her wild stories that you weren't sure a daughter should know. Hiya, Sally Face. Your mom said cheerfully after she opened the door. Sally Face? Your cheeks gave away your embarrassment. You leaned forward enough to just see Sally Face standing in the doorway, speaking to your mother. Come on in, dear. Thanks for bringing home my drunk daughter last night and opened the door wider for Sal to step inside. Drunk? He sounded just as shocked as you did earlier. She thinks I blacked out last night. You clarified for him and lifted up the bottle of Gatorade. He chuckled. Sally Face, tell my mother that her daughter can fall asleep anywhere and sleep like a log. You walked over to him and set your hand on his shoulder, a wave of excitement filling your body. Y yeah he stammered, nervous from your touch. We didn't drink. Well, we did drink. But, uh, it wasn't alcohol. He anxiously shoved his hands into the pockets of his jeans after he realized how unconvincing he sounded. Okay, your mom said. You could tell she didn't believe either of you. Well, you have lots of unpacking to do today. She's been putting it off for long enough. It's time for her to get to work today. To you and your mother's surprise, Sally Face said, I'll help. Your mom agreed and flashed a wink at you before disappearing into her room to continue unpacking her boxes. You showed Sal your bare room, explained the vision, and you guys began to work. He easily pushed the mattress into the corner as you struggled to bring in the boxes of stuff belonging to you. Most of it is just moving around furniture and then setting up my belongings. So are you excited for Thanksgiving? Sal asked. You cut open the tape on the box labeled bed stuff, scrawled in your handwriting. Yeah, kind of. I'm nervous about what the other parents will think of me and my mom. You said and took out the contents of the box. Will you help me with the sheets? These are more comfy than the sleeping bag. Sure. He yanked off the sleeping bag. Why? You and your mom are so bubbly. Thanks, but most parents with kids our age are old, tired, and grumpy. He chuckled softly at your joke. Together you put on your new bed sheets. Much better. Being around you guys is like a breath of fresh air. They're gonna love you too. You saw his eyes get smaller from inside the prosthetic. You knew he was giving you a comforting smile underneath. What's next? He added. My mom bought me this disco ball for my birthday. I loved it in my old room, so I couldn't give it away. 
You examine the ball of glass in your hands. Looks like a great addition. Sally Face smiled and disappeared into the next room to go grab a chair and tools. Where should it go? He said when he returned. And you pointed to the spot on the ceiling where you thought the disco ball would fit best. You watched as he began to screw the sphere into the ceiling. His black sweatshirt rose up a bit, exposing a bit of his stomach. You stared at the spot where his pale skin was exposed. You thought you could see a subtle outline of abs, but the only way to know was if you got closer. You wanted desperately to know if what your mom said was true. You bit your lip and debated if now was a good time to ask, considering that Sal was on a chair and he seemed to lose his composure easily at the mention of last night. Did you really carry me upstairs from Larry's apartment? You asked once he had two feet back on the ground. He clumsily dropped the remaining screw in his hand. Yeah, he stammered quickly as he bent over to grab the dropped item. I didn't think you wanted to sleep over at Larry's, so I carried you upstairs. I didn't want to wake you. You look so peaceful. Oh, I should really get more sleep, you said sheepishly. Don't worry about it, he said mindlessly. Wait, I mean, of course you should get more sleep, but I just wanted you to know that I don't care. That came out wrong. I do care. I just... His voice trailed off. Stop talking, Sal, he thought. It's nice to know that someone is willing to put up with my tired tendencies. You were trying to reassure him that you understood what he was trying to say. He smiled beneath his prosthetic. Hey, your ears are super red. Are you okay? You asked. Oh, yeah. His hands shot to his ears, feeling how warm they were. His ears were giving his blush away. It just happens sometimes. He lied. Think you can help me put my clothes away? We can be done after that. He nodded, helping you open the box that had all your clothes. You stood in silence as the two of you folded clothes and put them in the various drawers. The silence wasn't uncomfortable, but more comforting. You were both trying your hardest to not smile like idiots. Occasionally, his hand brushed against yours. You were 90% sure he was doing this on purpose. Every now and then, he would slow down to look at the kind of clothes you wore. He'd sometimes rub the material in between his palm and thumb before quickly putting it away. Having two people, especially Sally Face, put your belongings away made the task less unpleasant and go by faster. There's one more box of clothes and then we're done, Sally Face said, reaching for the final box. Wait, don't open that one. Unbeknownst to him, that box contained all your bras and underwear. He looked at you with a puzzled look in his eyes. I um, I can handle that box, you said nervously. It's the final box, let's just get it over with. He insisted, starting to open the box. No! You quickly yanked the box out of his hands. Your cheeks flushed red with embarrassment. I'm so sorry, Sal. I just really don't want you to see what's in here. Oh, okay then. He didn't piece together what was inside that box, but wanted to respect your wishes. You gave him an appreciative smile. You quickly pushed the box under the dresser and out of sight. You flopped onto your comfy bed, and to your surprise, Sal flopped down next to you. Just then, you realized you were still in your pajamas. I should have changed first. You wanted to apologize for still being in your pajamas, but instead you said, Thanks for the help, Sally Face. Sal had told you to stop apologizing for minuscule things, and he didn't really seem to care that you were still in your pajamas. No problem, he said softly. He turned his head to look at you. You were staring up at the disco ball, clearly lost in thought. What's on your mind? A lot. You were feeling so many different things that you weren't sure where to start. You thought you were fine a minute ago, but emotions just came rushing in. You were so grateful for your new friends, but you started to miss your friends from your old town, but you felt guilty that they hadn't crossed your mind until just recently. You were nervous about Thanksgiving and starting in the middle of the school year. You wondered if your mom had really made the right decision, but you felt guilty questioning her. You felt terrible for snapping at Sally Face. So many conflicting emotions stirred in your mind. Confused and still tired, your eyes began to well up. It's okay, Sally Face reassured. He moved closer to you and gently wiped the tears from your soft cheeks. Your eyes didn't break away from the ceiling. He didn't want to tell you about his depression and anxiety, but he wondered if knowing that he understood how you felt would make you feel better. He remembered the terrible nightmares he had when he first moved into the apartments. His eyebrows furrowed with concern under his prosthetic. He desperately hoped that nightmares weren't the reason for your constant tiredness. He could have sworn that the extermination of red eyes had solved the nightmare problem. I'm just tired, Sally Face. You whispered as he wiped another tear from your cheek. I get it. It took me a while to adjust too. I'll turn off the lights on my way out and let you get some rest. He slowly stood up to leave. You quickly grabbed him by the wrist. 
Please stay, was all you managed to get out. You didn't really understand why, but his presence comforted you. You felt this natural draw to him, and excitement filled your stomach when he was around. You loved the calm his touch gave you so much, that you didn't even notice his wrist was the same temperature as his ice-cold hands. It's only been three days, and you're already attached to him, you guiltily thought. He didn't say a word as he sat down next to you. Just please stay, you whispered. Okay, he whispered back. He grabbed your hand and gave it a gentle squeeze. He laid down next to you, admiring your jawline as you continued to stare up at the ceiling. You finally broke your gaze from the ceiling to Sal's beautiful blue eyes. He was watching you with a concerned look in his eyes. Thank you. You whispered so softly that Sally Face almost didn't hear you. Can I get up to go turn off the lights? I think you'll sleep better. You nodded as another tear rolled down your face and onto the sheets. He came back and lay down next to you, closer than he was before. He then interlaced his fingers with yours. It's gonna be okay. Too tired to speak, you nodded before drifting off to sleep.